Hi, and welcome to episode nine of Metastatic Modernity. I'm Tom Murphy, and in this episode, I'll describe how it is we got into this mess as part of our effort to put modernity into context. So modernity is a period of kind of sudden destruction, an ecological nosedive in a relative blink of an eye, as we've discussed in the previous few episodes. It looks pretty dire. Earth is reeling as a result. So how did it come to this? So this is a recipe in three steps. The first step is agriculture. Agriculture took us out of our ecological context. Uh, it was new to this planet, to the community of life. It wasn't uh, adapted. To, the life was not adapted to this novelty. It's basically an experiment not built on sustainable principles. It's not vetted on timescales that are relevant to evolution. It plays with nutrient cycles in ways that aren't, again, part of the evolutionary construct. Uh, this is very important to how communities of life work. And outside of floodplains, it's not clear that agriculture can really work because we're artificially trying to pump fertilizers and nutrients into a soil that's not really ecologically made that way. This is why we use up arable land and it goes, you know, uh, out of commission, uh, even if it takes a few thousand years. What is that on the, the scale of, of uh, life on this planet? So this also went to our heads as masters of the land and control. We owned it. Earth belonged to us. This is hugely important and it changed the way we saw us ourselves in relation to the community of life contributing to our separation and a sense of human supremacy. So the next piece is science and technology where the enlightenment brought us a lot of tools, sharp tools by which we could understand how nature worked. And so we have learned a lot about nature's inner workings as a result. And we use this to increase our mastery, our control, our manipulation, generally aimed at short-term gains for humans alone and not even all humans at that. So the focus became increasingly narrow and increasingly distant from ecological concerns because we became more and more disconnected into an increasingly virtual world um, that lacks basic ecological sense at this point. In the meantime, we're really impressed with the things that we've done. I mean, we'll go on forever about our inventions. It turns out brains are impressed by brains. But we never ask the question, well, yeah, that invention is great, but is it a net harm or, or net good to the entire community of life? It's just a, huh? Is that even relevant? Uh, meanwhile, a lot of harm piles up. Step three is fossil fuels, which really transformed how we did the things that we had learned to do, um, really turbocharged our manipulation and control, just about power. We now had the means to carry out all kinds of crazy notions that might pop into our heads. Um, so it kind of gave us superpowers. We could move mountains, we could reach space. It seemed to allow a kind of transcendence that we could build submarines so we could sort of swim, we could build airplanes so we could sort of fly, rockets. Uh, it seemed like we were unlimited. We'd broken free of the shackles of nature. Um, the Green Revolution is a really a, a story of fossil fuels and agriculture where fertilizer comes from natural gas feedstock and we mechanize things like tilling and planting and harvest and processing and transport of food. And with that, we have grown a lot of people. And, you know, this fueled this era of hockey sticks of, of things that are just shooting up or off to the races. Everything was growing and economies then assume permanent growth as a foundation, which is kind of a big mistake. So now we're gonna look at a lot of these hockey stick curves that are flat for a long time and then shoot up all of a sudden. So all of the following plots will use the same time axis spanning 1200 years. So first we have human population. It's really shot up. That's a story of fossil fuels and the green revolution. I'm going to put each one up in the uh, in the background as we go. So this is energy, which has really shot up like a hockey stick. And even per capita, it's shot up by almost a factor of 10. 
This is really a story of fossil fuels because 80% of our energy is still in the form of fossil fuels. With that comes CO2 emissions because fossil fuels make CO2 when we burn it. This is, by the way, not cumulative CO2, but the annual emissions. It just keeps going up as we use more fossil fuels. Now we have copper as just a representative example of mined materials. Um, mining has a huge ecological impact, the tailings, the pollution, introduction of all kinds of new stuff into the environment. And this also is a huge per capita increase in material per person, but on an absolute scale is just a rocket. Plastics I use as a representative for waste. It's shooting up like all the rest, no big surprise. And now here's an ecological twist. Here's extinction rates among amphibians, mammals, and birds. That's also going up like a hockey stick. And, you know, are we still applauding our hockey stick achievements here? Um, it, it's coming at a cost. So let's look at some of the other costs. We have forest cover, both on the left in total forest cover and then on the right in the primeval or old growth forest, both going down. There's a data point, by the way, all the way to the left, you know, way off to the uh, in the distant past. Um, but you know, look where the projection is going and where it hits zero. Now, you don't want to take that literally because, you know, it is just a model, but still, man, it looks pretty bad. And then we have mammals. We've talked about wild mammal uh, loss in the previous um, episodes. Here it is in plot form, and you see it just diving towards zero. And so, I mean, what does this make you think about our trajectory if you've got all these downsides to it? And we showed this one before, but it's worth showing again. The mammal mass per human is just dropping like a rock in recent times. It's this, this, this cliff edge. It's kind of a, an inverse hockey stick, um, just absolutely tanking. So that, of course, is hugely concerning. So this is a plot of, I mean, just a cartoon really, but it's accurate, of fossil fuels over time. And it's just a spike. Um, the hockey sticks we've seen are a reflection of the left edge of this spike, you know, that, that uh, looked like a hockey stick, but we're not done over the peak yet. Uh, it self-terminates. It has to go back to zero. We don't get to decide the area under this curve. We can't draw any arbitrary shape of any arbitrary size and magnitude because there's just so much stuff on the planet, and that's it. Um, now, our lives are short enough, and we've just been on this, like, ascending part up near the top, and, you know, that's uh, given us a perspective that, you know, this seems normal and fun, but it builds the wrong narrative. So it's it's a dangerous thing to be thinking. All right, there's a lot going on here. I'm not going to go over it in any detail. You can see on Do the Math, this post called Our Time in the River. But agriculture starts on the upper left. It's kind of like a stream that once we stepped into it, we've got settlements and then possessions and then surplus, which needed armies to protect. Uh, property rights, which led to patriarchy and monotheism division of labor, hierarchy, classes, subjugation of animals and humans, a lot of ecological issues like deforestation, soil erosion, salt accumulation, desertification. Then science comes in as a big tributary that amplified all of these things, and then fossil fuels really put it on steroids. And the thing then goes over a waterfall. I mean, it self-terminates. This is just how it has to go in a sense. So. All of this kind of leaves us confused about how it is we're supposed to live on this planet. We've been trying this unusual mode and just consider that, uh, ask yourself the question, what other animals on the planet besides maybe our domesticated animals are confused about how to live in this world? Um, that's kind of unique to our brand. Um, no one planned this. One thing just led to another. No one sat around a table and plotted this course. It operated more like a trap that once you started going this is where you end up, given the resources available. Um, it's kind of a look what we can do mode. It's uh, sort of like the stupid stunts I certainly did growing up um, as we test our limits and learn what we're capable and not capable of. But there's a lot of collateral damage in the process here on the ecological front. And, you know, the failure is really forgetting our ecological context, that we're members of the club of life 
and we're not looking long term we're not looking for total ecological fitness okay so that's it for this episode um in the next one we'll look at the reaction of well maybe we can just keep all the good stuff and remove the the bad things right so that should be easy um that's what we'll address next time in the meantime uh please look at the companion write-up to this video at do the math blog and i'll see you next time